Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we yield ourselves to your word this morning. In the name of Jesus. Open our hearts and eyes of understanding. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, we just go straight to the word. Uh, um, yesterday we started a series on, you know, concerning holiness. So we're looking at what is holiness and how, as a believer, can we, you know, walk, can we perfect holiness in the fear of God? Uh, you know, so we're just going to go straight now to the word because of our time. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, all right. So let's open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians and chapter 4 from verse um, 3. He said, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Now, very important, okay, uh, as a believer, we must, he says this here yeah, in chapter 4, he says uh, in verse 3, he says it is the will of God. Verse 4 says that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. So a believer, we as believers, we must know how to. So when you say how to, you're talking about, you know, the principles, okay? How to possess your vessels in sanctification and honor. By vessel, what do we mean? We mean, the Bible means, by vessel it talks about you, the earth. And the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So by vessel it talks about your body, your life, your body. So we must learn how to possess your body, okay, in sanctification and in honor. And I'm very important, you know, this is in two, uh, this is basically in two parts, okay? Uh, number one, for you to come to a place where you want to know how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor, you have to understand, you cannot do without, you cannot, you, you know, you cannot try to know, or you cannot know how to possess your vessels in sanctification and honor without, you know, understanding clearly your identity, your current state, your current, uh, better still, your current status in Christ Jesus, what God has made of you. Because when we're talking about honor, you know, because we talked about sanctification, that is honor. So when you talk about honor, okay, uh, of course you will know that, hey, this is what I am, or this is what this is, before you can put honor on it. Uh, you put honor on something that you know the, you know, the value of it. So let me give you an example. Uh, for example, if you, there are certain things that are certain places that, you know, a royalty, okay, a king or, you know, a president, there are certain places they don't, you don't find them, okay, because number one, it comes with, uh, with the status, with who they are. So there are certain places, certain things they don't do because of the position that they occupy or the state that they are, all right? The same thing happens here, okay? I'm using that as a reference point, okay? The same thing happens here, that, um, I mean, before we come to know how to possess our vessels in sanctification and honor, we must understand what exactly are we putting honor to. You put honor to things that have been valued, okay? You put honor on things that have been valued. So he says this, that it is the will of God, okay? We read First Thessalonians 4, 3 again. He said, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, your sanctification. He said, it is the will of God. So that means if you're at any point, you want to know, what is the will of God uh, for me at this point? I mean, regarding your life, your body, okay? How you do your body. He said, you, the sanctification that everyone should know how to abstain from sexual immorality. We are going to look at that again, all right? He said that each of you should know how to. That's my point. My emphasis in today's one, in chapter 4, okay? As well in verse, chapter 4, verse 4. He said that each of you should know how to. So should know how to. So there is how to for everything. There is how to. For everything, how to play football, how to play a game, how to you know pass your exam, how to um, how to read your Bible. Okay, there is how to. Okay, if you don't know the how tos, okay, how to do certain things, you just you know just do it. You know, just do it anyhow. Okay, so but there's a way on how to. So he says that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. Like I said, the verse it talks about the body, his own vessels in sanctification and in honor and honor. Praise God. So, but what I said earlier now is that for you to come to that out, you must understand your identity. So, I, it's very important. For example, we looked at that last week, uh, the, uh, yesterday, there about uh, in Romans, 
Let's go to Romans. And Romans and chapter, praise God. Romans and chapter 12, for example, it says, I beseech you, uh, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. So by body here, by body here is the same thing as the vessel. So the body, your body is the vessel. Your body is a vessel. The Bible says we have these treasures in earthly vessels. So the what treasure? The wisdom of the spirit, the spirit of God. We have it in earthly vessels. Our body, our body indwells, okay? The spirit of God, okay? God lives with the Bible. So your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The body is the vessel. The body is the vessel. It says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So uh, Romans 12 is saying there again, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies, okay? That you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy. So there are two parts, like I said. We have the identity part and also the presentation part. That is the part that you must ensure that you possess your vessel, okay, in sanctity and in honor. That is the same thing by saying that you present your body holy, okay? So, so that that's the second part of it. The first part of it is what God has made of you. That's why he's saying, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. My brethren means they are no brothers, sisters, of the, the, the same source, okay? And we are all sourced from God. We are believers, so from God, when you believe the gospel, you came out of the womb of the spirit. So you are also a child of God. He says, I beseech you, therefore, in other words, you know, I beg you, I beg you, therefore, brothers and sisters, brethren, by the mercies of God. So in other words, he's saying that I'm going to beg you, I'm, apolog- I'm begging you, okay, I'm indulging you, I'm begging you by what God had done. We looked at that earlier, okay, that the mercies of God, is, he talks about all God has done in Christ Jesus for us. So we looked at that in Ephesians. He said, for God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he has loved us, even when we're dead in trespasses, he has quickened us together. He raised us up together. So he raised us. He quickened us. That's Ephesians 2. So it talks about what he has done. He raised us. He quickened us. And he says, it is the riches of his mercy. So this is what he has done is the riches of his mercy. And one of the things that God has done for us, and we looked at that as I know two days ago, is the fact that he has sanctified us. The Bible says we are are sanctified by the offering of his body once and for all. Look at that. Hebrews. Hebrews. Hallelujah. I love the word of God. Hebrews in chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Glory to God. Hebrews 10, verse 10. He said, by that will, we have been sanctified. Did you see? So this is part of his, this is his mercies. So he said, we have been sanctified. So what he has done, he didn't say we will be sanctified. So we have been sanctified. Like we said, to, to be sanctified means to be separated from where? From the world. So the Bible says we were Gentiles, carried away by, you know, were alienated you know, in our minds, by wicked works, we're separated from God. With the Bible says, the prince of the powers of hell, he ruled in us. We were children of disobedience. We were children of wrath. But we have now been separated by the offering of the body of Christ. Once and for all. Look at it again. He says this. He said, verse 10, 10. He said, by that will, we have been sanctified. It means we have been declared holy. We have been declared holy by the offering of the body of Christ once and for all hallelujah we have been separated so it's a spiritual reality it is a reality in your spirit when i see you as a believer i will see you in the eyes of the spirit look at that the bible said no we need no man after the flesh so we see we when i see you as a believer i see you as the sanctified as a saint that's why hebrews 3 verse 1 could tell them okay it says that holy brethren holy brethren he called them holy why did he call them holy? Why did he see them as sanctified? He saw them as sanctified because of what Christ has done. So when I see you, I'm seeing you with the mind and with the eyes of what Christ has done. And what is it that Christ has sanctified you by his mercies? So let's, let's go back to our Romans 12. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by what God has done for us. So I'm, be- I'm begging you by what he has done for you. I'm beseeching you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So we have a responsibility. As a believer, we do. We have a responsibility. 
So there must be a corresponding action to what we have, we have been convinced of in our spirit. So we have been made holy. We have been sanctified. But however, we must, we must, through the help of the spirit, to carry, to possess, to learn how to, to learn how to, to know how to possess our vessels in sanctity and honor. Okay, there must be, there must be a knower. We have to know that. So it, it is something I want you to be settled in your spirit, I mean, your mind today. That as a believer, you must learn how to know how. You must know how. How to possess your body in sanctity and honor. But you cannot do that without seeing the message of God first. So primarily, you see the message of God. What God has done for you. God has justified you. So you cannot just say, oh, I want to possess my vessels, you know, you know, sanctification and honor. Without seeing the message of God. Let us see First Corinthians. Hallelujah. I want to believe you're following me. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, rather. 2 Corinthians and chapter 6. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians and chapter 6. Now, okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 11. 2 Corinthians 6, 11. Look at what it says there. So Paul is writing to the Corinthians. He said, Oh Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide, wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted of your own affection. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Now, verse 14, he said, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So he's talking to them. He said, do not be unequally yoked together. By unequally yoked together, what does it mean? It means you're sharing, you know, what they are indulging in. So in other words, as a believer. So it calls, so look at that again. You have to understand this. So he says that, do not be unequally. So he's writing to you, Corinthians, or better still, I'm writing to you as a believer. He said, do not be unequally yoked. By unequally yoke means that, you know, uh, by yoke simply means, okay, the unbeliever, okay, you know, has certain, you know, characteristics. For example, the Bible said they were carried away by their lust. An unbeliever is said to be ruled by the prince of the powers of the air, okay, the, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. An unbeliever is alienated from the life of God by wicked works, by wicked, their minds are alienated by the field of wicked works. Okay, they have all kinds of, you know, wicked works. Unbelievers, those who have not received Jesus, okay, all are said to have all kinds of unbelievers. So he said, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. It does not mean, for example, we have classes, you know, those who are students, you have classes with them. Those with, with a lot of unbelievers, those who are, you know, um, into business, you do business deals with unbelievers, okay? That's a different thing entirely. But what he's talking about here, he said, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You share the same things. The same principles. What is their principles of stealing, principles of envy, principles of rebellion, principles of fornication, sexual immorality? You share that. You discuss it. You discuss about how to elicit, you know, you know how to carry out, you know, uh, illegal, evil things, things that are not in the will of God. He said, look at it again. He said, do not be, hallelujah, praise God. He said, do not be unequally yoked together. With unbelievers, he said, do not be unequally yoked together with the unbeliever. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Look at that. So the believer is righteousness. So don't forget that. Don't forget what I said earlier. He said, I beseech you by the message of God. So you have to see identity. You cannot possess your vessels in sanctification and honor without seeing your identity, without knowing who you are, without knowing your status. Look at that. He says, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? So what is who is righteousness? Righteousness is the believer. Righteousness is the Corinthians that he was writing to. So righteousness is you that have believed the gospel. So he says, what fellowship has righteousness? So it's like saying, I'm saying, oh, for example, uh, let me use this, uh, this marker. So for example, hey amen. So he's like saying, oh, this uh, marker is red. This one is green. So it's what fellowship? Is red with green. Amen. So this is red. This is green. What fellowship is the righteousness? Righteousness. The believer is righteousness. As I speak to you, you are righteousness. Let's keep reading again. He says that for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? Who is light? Who is righteousness? Is the believer. What fellowship? Amen. He said what accord with is as Christ. With Belial. So who is Christ? He is the believer. Or what part as a believer with an unbeliever? Did you see that? So it's it's not 
So this this writing, okay, addresses, identifies with the uh, I know with the status. Okay, it talks about the status. So you, the believer, okay, is a what concord? What accord is believer? We don't believer, righteous with unrighteousness. Okay, Christ and Belial. Now let's keep reading. Verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Now he now say, for you are. For you are. So look at that. So he's, he has to re-emphasize this. That you are. So if you have to, if you understand what you are, it will be, it's your number one step, okay, to knowing how to possess your vessels and sanctity. No, no. Because when you know who you are, you know, oh, this is what I'm meddling with, okay, is unrighteous. This character is unrighteous. This is an unequal yoke. So, for example, as a believer, you have believed gospel. You are with you know, some unbelievers, okay, doing business, and, and somebody's, you know, trying to raise, you know, ideas of how to, you know, engage in sexual immorality. And, and you, 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 know, you succumb to that. You begin to think of how you can also carry out such with that unbeliever. That's what he's saying. Unequally yoked. So he said, you must know how to, how to possess your vessels. But first and foremost, you cannot do this without understanding your identity. You must know who you are, that you have been sanctified. By knowing who you are, okay, it will help you to know, it will help you to learn how to, you know, how to possess your vessels. First Corinthians, and another six. First Corinthians and chapter six again. Hallelujah. First Corinthians and chapter six. So this guy, He's writing to, so Paul started in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. He was talking to a guy who, you know, was sleeping with his stepmother, who was a believer, who, who is part of the believers meeting. You know, then he, you know, he started to address the entire church not to keep company with such persons. Because if you keep company with such persons, you become corrupted. Now, when you get, when you fast forward to uh, uh, chapter 6, you know, verse 18, he said, flee sexual immorality. Everything that a man does is outside the body. Don't forget, it's outside the body. And for body, yeah, what are we talking about here? As a believer, you're talking about the vessel, the vessel, the vessel. For flee sexual immorality, everything that a man does is outside the body. But he will commit sexual immorality since against his own body. So, or do you not know? Now, did you see that? Verse 19. Oh my goodness, I love this. So he's addressing the believer not to you know, indulge in sexual immorality. And he's telling them that, see, indulging in sexual immorality means, implies that you are sinning against your body. Okay? And he now, from there, he went to remind them, the believer, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Now, Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Now, now this is very important. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I used to wonder, if these days, some individuals would want to write what Apostle Paul has written to Corinthians Church here, he would tell them, he would tell, because he was talking to the sexually immoral, you know, believer, okay, you know, individuals would have said today, some would have said, do you not know that your body was the temple of the Holy Ghost? That's not what he said. Which, you know, individuals would have said today, your body was the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you had from God, okay? And, you know, because implying that now, based on the sexual immorality, that body could not have been the temple of the Holy Ghost. No. A believer is the temple of the Holy Ghost because they believe the gospel. The Spirit of God comes to dwell in you because you believe the gospel. The Bible says, if any man has not the Spirit of God, he's none of his. So because we believe the gospel... The Spirit of God comes to us. Paul said, okay, that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 act. So I think it's better we look at that place in Act and chapter 11. Act 11. Act 11. I, I think I want to believe that. Uh, amen. Act, I think Act 15. Act 15, thank you. Act 15. Praise God. Act 15. Where is Act 15? Um, oh my goodness, because of time. Okay, good. Act 15. Act 15. Are you there? Act 15. He says in from verse. So, you know, I, I'll try to summarize it. In Act 15, there was contention regarding salvation. And so the, the, the believers, the elders met. And while they were con contemplating regarding, you know, uh, salvation, what 
some individuals must you know, some person said where well, people must be circumcised before they are said to be saved that faith alone is not enough that they have to be circumcised so peter look at what peter said there in verse 7 and when there was much when uh, from verse 7 and when there had been much dispute peter rose up and said unto them men and brethren you know that a good while ago god chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. They hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the arts, God, God who knows the arts, acknowledge them. Who are the them? Those who believe by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as it did to us. So in other words, this is, this is why I went to Acts 15, that the giving of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible said God acknowledged what they have done in their heart. So that's why I keep telling people, only God knows who have believed. So it's not about, okay, somebody inside water or somebody is, you know, is doing something, giving tithe or giving it, make somebody, oh, no, this person has believed. God knows in the heart. The Bible says God who acknowledge, God knows the heart. God knows the heart of men. Acknowledge that these guys have believed in the heart and gave them the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So a believer who believes, the Bible says, with their heart, man believes. With the heart, man believes. So when someone believes in their heart, okay, the spirit is given. So hallelujah, the spirit is given. So very important. So let's go back to our first Corinthians. So the first Corinthians, he says this, that your body is addressing that guy who, has, who is into sexual immorality. He said, see, know you not. So what is he doing? He's challenging the, his knowledge. Don't you know? Don't you know? Because by the time you know who you are, your status, your, your identity, it will help you in knowing how to possess your vessels in sanctity and honor. He said, no, you not. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of him, who is in you? Hallelujah. Did you see that? No, I, I love this. Look at it. In verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Okay. is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and he says, who is in you? Hallelujah. He's telling the guy who was, you know, who had just committed sexual immorality. He said, I mean, he was trying to address sexual immorality. Do you not know that is in you? Because if you know it's in you, you will hone on yourself. There is, there is a downside to it. And I'm going to talk about that not today. Okay, probably next, right tomorrow. There's a downside to not, you know, not carrying your, possessing your virtues in sanctification and honor. But very important for today's own, we are going to still address the identity. He said, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which he said, who is in you? Hey, hey. The Spirit of God is in you, brother and my sister. The Spirit of God is in you. But you have to learn how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. You start from identity. The reason why we, we come to identity, why we, why we are emphasizing who you are in Christ Jesus, what God has done. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The Bible said the communication of your faith, Philemon 1.6, he said the communication of your faith will become more effectual when you acknowledge everything that is in you in Christ Jesus. You are beginning to identify, know who you are, know what you carry, who you are, your status in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. By the time you know that, he says that in 1 Corinthians 6, he says, who is in you, whom you are from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. That's the message of God. Because, to be honest with you, the total summary of knowing how to possess your vessels in sanctity and honor, especially as regarding sexual immorality, is flee. Is flee. <laughs> that is, is flee. But we're going to look at that, and we're going to bring, you know, several scenarios, so that scenarios that can help us, in, a, in you know, instances what we do, how to do, okay? But largely, it's to flee. Knowing the principles that are at work in you as human beings, okay? And, you know, knowing those principles and you taking a stand, ensuring that you don't, you, you, you know, you, 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 you don't create, you don't, you know, create any appearances of evil. You don't, you don't, you ensure that appearances of evils don't come. But very important today, all right, you must understand that it takes the message of God, okay, to indulge, to beseech believers or individuals to possess their vessels in holiness, in sanctification and honor. You take the message of God. We see that beseech you by the message of God. 
So I'm begging you by the message of God. I'm showing to you the message of God. When you see the message of God, it will help you. If you draw power, you draw strength from those from the message of God to flee, to run where needed. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We bless your name. We glorify your name. Thank you for your word today. And Father, I pray that you establish every one of us in this truth, in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are listening from home, wherever they're listening from, that you establish them on this truth, in the name of Jesus, that you, Father, that they will find strength, indeed, to possess their vessel in sanctification and honor, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>